Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a brand new 2021 Jeep Wrangler Sport. And today, I'm gonna review it for you guys. Yes, I am finally reviewing a Jeep Wrangler, and more specifically, the two-door Wrangler. I feel like everybody on the internet is always just reviewing the unlimited four-door Wrangler, I guess everybody in real life is buying the Unlimited Wrangler. You really rarely see these two doors around anymore. But today I'm going to make a compelling argument for why you should consider a two door Wrangler, especially in this nacho yellow color. I think they look fantastic and the turning radius on this thing is killer. So without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, I want to thank Brown Dob Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram for allowing me to review this truck. For all your Chrysler Jeep Dodge or Ram needs, you can visit Brown Dob right off of Route 33 in Easton, Pennsylvania, or at their website, browndob.net. Starting up front on the Wrangler, it's fairly basic up here. You'll have halogen headlights, halogen fog lights, and turn signals here on the fender flare, though you are going to get two tow hooks down here on the bumper. I really do like the body style of this generation. I think it's a nice evolution of the previous generations. Jeep never really strays too far with the design of this because they know their audience really likes the look of it. I think this particular body style looks a lot more aggressive and a little bit more muscular with the lines on the hood and the beefier sides of it. Now moving to the engine specs segment, if this is your first time watching my channel, traditionally I just open the hood, set up my camera and tell you the specs. But this Wrangler is unique. In fact, all of the Wranglers have always been like this, but it's fun to show you how to enter the actual engine bay. Now there's no hood release latch inside the Jeep. So you open this up, you push down and pull that off. And then if we go to the other side here, it's the same process, pull that down, push it off, and then that comes down. So now it's loose. And then all you have to do is just like a regular vehicle, stick your hand in there and here we have access to this Jeep's 3.6 liter e-torque engine making 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque and that is paired to an 8-speed automatic transmission. Moving to the profile of this Wrangler and starting here with the wheels and tires you cannot tell me Jeep didn't do this on purpose. The 17-inch wheels are wrapped in 245-75R Goodyear Wrangler tires so that's a nice little nod and then you can see in the wheel itself there is a little jeep down there nice little easter egg and then if we move up to the side here there is a functional vent right there and then you'll get your trail rated badge and your jeep logo with the wrangler sport sticker now obviously these doors are removable so you can see the latches right here the windshield is also able to fold down in addition to being able to take these top parts off i'll show you that a little later in the video this does not have keyless entry, though it does have a slot for the regular key right there. And the mirrors are fairly basic, but they do include heating incorporated into them. And then as we move down here, no cap for the gas tank. That's pretty standard on these Jeeps. And then if we move to the rear, you'll have your rear tire right here. And the last generations of the Jeeps did not have backup cameras because in 2018, it was federally mandated that every vehicle needed to include one. So a lot of aftermarket uh, manufacturers would put, if they wanted a backup camera, you would put it on the license plate down here, but then you're getting half the tire and you're really not getting the uh, best visibility. So for this generation, when Jeep had to include a backup camera, they very cleverly integrated it into the spare tire right here. So it's right in the center. Very, very smart on Jeep's part. And then you'll have another tow hook down here. And then if we open up the rear, it is split. Obviously with the tire, a lift gate wouldn't hold, the, the shocks in that wouldn't hold, so it opens to the side. And then you'll have the JL logo because that is the name of this generation of the Jeep and all the specifications, which is really, really nice. And then this is really cool. You can fold this up so you can have uh, easier access into the back here. But then if we close this, it uh, it's like just so cool. Look at how cool that looks. And you can have, uh, as I mentioned previously, easier access into the back right here for storage. Back here, pretty basic for storage, though there is an AC uh, 12 volt, or sorry, DC 12 volt back here. Additionally, if you open up the rear again, there is a little 
hidden storage cubby down here, which is really nice. And you can put all your door hinges in here if you take off the paneling. So that's really nice as well. Nice little hidden cargo. And then if you wanna fold the second row seats down, you can just hit that button and then they will fold down automatically. Stepping inside the Wrangler, starting here with the door panel, you'll get your mirror controls right here, a really nice door handle, and then lock and unlock. Now you might be saying, well, if you can take the doors off, how is all that functionality still in there? Well, what you can do is down here, all the wires are in this cord. And so basically what you do is you just unhook this cord and that unplugs the wires for the functionality of the door controls. And then the mirrors are very cleverly integrated into the center right there. But we'll get to that in a minute. Moving along the panel here, you'll have your lighting controls and then your climate vents. Very nice build quality in here and you are gonna get a driver's side grab handle. So stepping inside here, very nice steering wheel. Let's turn the Jeep on here. Pretty good overall sound and then closing the door here. It is very cozy in here. You're gonna get a nice center gauge cluster screen right there with everything you'd ever need to know on this Jeep. And then you have the controls on the steering wheel right here. So you'll have your drivetrain controls, your speedometer, your tire pressure, and then you could do everything else that you'd wanna do, you know, with your radio and everything like that if you wanna see what station you're on. So it's really nice and convenient to be able to see all the different things, your pitch and your yaw, which is always great to see as well. And then you have two traditional gauges right here, your tack and your speedometer, and then your turn signal and windshield wipers. And then as I mentioned, your steering wheel controls, Bluetooth and your cruise control settings. And then on the back of the steering wheel, you will have controls here for volume and your channel changing on both sides. And then moving here, you do have a tiny infotainment screen, but this does still include Apple CarPlay. This looks to me to be about a six and a half, maybe a seven inch screen, but it is very, very useful, very cool nonetheless. You can go into your climate control settings and you can control your heated seats or your heated steering wheel from in here, as well as all the climate controls. Though thankfully, below the screen, there is a full suite of climate controls as well with physical buttons for all of that stuff, which is always really nice to see. You're also gonna get a volume knob and a tuning knob for the radio, which I love to see the physical ones. Very quick and responsive. I love Uconnect. I think Chrysler, or I guess it's called Stellantis now, really knocked it out of the park with their infotainment systems on this generation. And it's just really responsive. And even on the smaller screen, you get so many features, and so I always love to see that. Moving below that, the climate controls and your other buttons, you'll get hill descent control, screen off, mute, traction control, stuff like that. And then down here, you'll get a 12 volt, your window controls, so you don't have to unplug those as well when you're taking the doors off. And then right here, you'll have your auxiliary USB and USB-C slots. And then you'll have a really cool physical four-wheel drive selector next to your automatic transmission. Now this does come in manual still, which I absolutely love. I am a big proponent for manual transmissions. So thankfully that's still available on some of these trims. Um, and it's really cool to see the physical uh, four-wheel drive thing. And then you'll get two cup holders right here and then a little nice center armrest that has a USB inside. And then it also does have a top rack with this kind of like cool camo texture right there. I don't know if you want to keep your wallet in there or something. And then you'll have your Wrangler logo on your uh, oh crap bar right there. And you will have a lockable glove box, which is really nice. And then I, I did notice right over there, I think I can zoom in. Yeah, you have another Jeep hidden there on the windshield doing a little climb. All right, really quickly, I just wanted to show you guys how to get into the back seats. And I don't want any comments like, oh, uh, that's Doug DeMiro's thing. Like Doug DeMiro's the only person to have ever shown how to get into the back seats of a vehicle. Basically what you do here is there is a grab handle at the top of the seat, you pull back on that. And if I'm being completely honest, it is a squeeze and a half to get back here. And then you can just pull the seat forward. But when you finally get into the back seats, you'll find there's some nice amenities here, like two climate vents and cup holders. Now this seat is about where I'd be sitting at 5'9", and you can see there is not a lot of legroom back here, but for smaller occupants, it would be perfect. And then up here, you do have your speakers and some dome lights. And then to get out, you just pull that forward again, 
hopefully there's no one in the driver's seat and then you can get out and push the seat back into its regular spot. While we're in here, I'm gonna show you guys the really, really simple way uh, to take off uh, the these two panels, at least. The rear panel, that is one gigantic piece. That is a lot more difficult to take off. A lot of people like the soft top Wranglers because they're much easier to take off, but kind of to compensate with this hard top, Jeep's made it really easy to take off this um, top portion. So we put the um, sun visor down, then you're gonna pull this down, you're gonna pull this, there's one on each side, pull that, and there's also one up here. I'm gonna step out for this process because it's already gonna be difficult with one hand. And so now that we've done that, we can just lift up and the whole panel comes off as you can see here. So I'm gonna lift that off here and we're gonna put it down right there. And so then you can do that on both sides and I'll uh, switch real quick. There we go, and now the whole thing's off. Hopefully that transition went well. I don't remember where I had my hand when I did it, but hopefully it looked okay. And then you can store those two pieces if you want in the rear, which is really nice. So you can have kind of this open top feel without taking the entire roof off. And that's a little bit more of a chore that you really need a whole team to do, but it's still really nice to have this very open top design. And it's pretty much, uh, like having it's more than obviously having a sunroof because you have the entire section right here and it's just really cool i've always loved how jeeps have done this and i think it's just so fantastic and as much as i've ragged on jeeps in the past uh in my videos and in my personal life i love these things honestly i hope to also have a jeep someday i have my tacoma now love my tacoma i think it's fantastic but i also really love these two-door jeeps and I would love to have one myself if I ever, if I ever became wealthy. Anyway, let's take this thing for a spin and see how it drives. All right, driving the 2021 Wrangler Sport. I don't know if I can properly convey how much fun this thing is to drive. It's so zippy, and as I mentioned in the opening, the turning radius is incredible on this thing. It's like so tiny and amazing. I love everything about this never have i had so much fun just drop like walking over to drive the vehicle to where i review it like i just like a it's a 30 second drive and i was grinning the whole way with this wrangler like it was so much fun to drive i absolutely love it and you know the four doors are okay the unlimiteds are okay but i really think that the the true wrangler shines as a two-door and i think that's what it really excels at in its um, just tiny nature and stuff. And I, it's just, it's cool that they can fit everything into such a small package like this. And I totally get why people get Jeeps and they're so much fun to drive. Now for my compelling argument to why you should buy a two-door Wrangler. Well, it still can fit passengers in the back, not well, but if you have younger passengers, you know, if you have a family, easy to fit people in the back right there and you're not getting as much storage space as you would in an unlimited but it's still really nice and as i mentioned killer turning radius so if you go down the wrong street and you need to make a ue this thing can make a much better ue than a than an unlimited can and it's also much better off-road for rock crawling and stuff because of the shorter wheelbase so that is also a huge benefit of having this smaller cab i also just like it because it's cozy it's really cozy in here and it just feels cool it's like a man cave and it's like ah yes i'm at peace in my wrangler and it's just oh, really nice but it still retains its kind of beefy looks so it works in kind of a cool trucky way too it's not um you know silly that you can take the roof off or whatever it's a it's a cool thing i personally would probably go for a soft top because it's easier than to take the entire roof that pretty much is going to conclude this review i really hope you guys enjoyed and if you could like and subscribe that would really help my channel i'm also a christian so if you have any prayer requests you can leave those in the comment section below and i like to do a weekly bible verse so here that is and with the bible verse i'll see you guys next time take care